Hi artists, we're here for another quick five minute watercolor tip. Are you one of those people who cleans out your palette after every session? Or do you get stressed out when your pristine watercolor pans get contaminated with other colors? Well, I'm here to tell you that by being a little bit of a neat freak, you've actually been missing out on something really amazing. So if you want to know how a dirty palette can actually make your art and your colors better, this video will help unlock a whole world of possibilities. Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck of Point Brush and I'm a commercial artist and a professional designer. I've owned my own design-based business for over a decade and I'm here to help give you the tools and the confidence to improve your artistry and take your art to the next level. In today's video, I wanna let you in on a little secret. While being clean and tidy is a great way to live your everyday life, when it comes to watercolor palettes, messy and dirty is the way to go. What is that you say? How can colors from a dirty palette be a positive in any way? And Margot, aren't you a type A, very neat and tidy kind of person? What changed? Um, okay, let's jump in. There are many schools of thought as far as color mixing and color technique are involved. So this tip might not exactly align with things that you see from other art teachers or other channels, and that's okay. I think that every artist is entitled to their own opinion and their own way of doing things. So what I'm gonna give you is my perspective and my recommendations based on my own experiences. Pigments and paints that come straight out of the tube are gorgeous in their own right. They're bright, they're saturated, they're just bursting with color. However, despite how pretty they are in their purest form, the more you're dealing with an unblended color, the more that individual color is going to stick out and fight other colors on your paper. So allowing your colors to get a little bit muddled up can actually make them a bit more natural and also it makes them play a bit nicer with other colors you're using on your painting. So generally speaking, the more you mix and blend and get away from those pure, straight out of the tube colors, the more harmonious your overall color scheme will become. If you think of your painting as a dish and your pigments as separate ingredients, um, in a yummy recipe, for example, those ingredients have to be combined, cooked and seasoned together in order for them to become one final cohesive dish. Otherwise, you're just left with separate ingredients that are all separate and don't come together as one unified final yummy dish. And it's kind of the same thing for color mixing. Ultimately, you want all of your colors to work hand in hand with each other so you don't end up with a rainbow effect where everything is all separate and clashing. In a way, working with a dirty palette forces you to blend your colors with one another and it introduces more variations in your tones, which I think makes them much more interesting and more varied and complex. And so, you know, sometimes I just stare at my mixing palette at all these incredible colors and hues that quite honestly just came about by accident. It really is surprising what wonderful new colors you can discover and utilize if you just let go a bit and try not to micromanage your mixing surface. And that's part of the joy of watercolor. It's the experimentation and adventure of taking a color and experiencing the alchemy that happens when you add an element of unpredictability to it. Personally, I think it's also an incredible way to get the most beautiful and complex skin tones. I actually have a section of the mixing area of my palette devoted to variations in skin tones, and I love how no two are alike. Um, if there's some leftover marigold yellow on my palette, maybe my character that day will have warmer undertones. Or if I happen to mix a skin tone a little closer to the pinks, we'll get somebody completely different with a, a rosier glow that day. Not cleaning your palette forces you in a way to just roll with it and not get too clinical with how you handle color. And lastly, a little bonus of leaving your palette alone and not cleaning it off after every session is that you have a lot less waste. And with quality watercolors being pricey, who doesn't like the additional savings and making their paint stretch a little further? 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you clean off your mixing surface after every use or not. And if you're interested in trying to go without cleaning it for an extended period of time. Let me know how it goes. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.